the Samaritan woman, her sons, and those with them met the source of life at Jacob's well. The source of life, of course, being Jesus Christ, the holy martyr Fortini, the Samaritan woman, her sons, Victor, named Fortinos, and Jose, and her sisters, Anatole, Foto, Fortida, Paraskevi, Kiriaki. They were all Greek names, by the way. Nero's daughter, Domina, and the martyr, Sebastian. The holy martyr, Fortini, the Samaritan woman, with whom the Savior converts at Jacob's well, according to John 4, verses 5 to 42. During the time of the Emperor Nero, 54 to 68 AD, who displayed excessive cruelty against Christians, Saint Fortini lived in Carthage with her younger son, Jose, and fearlessly preached the gospel there. Her eldest son, Victor, fought bravely in the Roman army against barbarians. As we know, uh, uh, Israel was under the Roman Empire, and the young men had to serve for, I think, about 20 years, 18 to whatever, you know, almost 40. So he was one of the Roman Emperor's, uh, Empire's soldiers. Her eldest son, Victor, fought bravely in the Roman army against barbarians and was appointed as military commander in this, of the city of Atalia, Asia Minor. Later, Nero called him to Italy to arrest and punish Christians. Sebastian, an official in Italy, said to St. Victor, I know that you, your mother, and your brother are followers of Christ. As a friend, I advise you to submit to the will of the emperor. If you inform on any Christians, you will receive their wealth. I'll show right to your mother and brother, asking them not to preach Christ in public. Let them practice their faith in secret, he said. And St. Victor replied, I want to be preacher of Christianity like my mother and brother. Sebastian said, Oh, Victor, we will know what woes you we all know what woes await you, your mother and brother. Then Sebastian suddenly felt a sharp pain in his eyes. He was dumbfounded and his face was sober. For three days he lay there blind without uttering word. On the fourth day he declared, The God of the Christians is the only true God. St. Victor asked why Sebastian has suddenly changed his mind. And Sebastian replied, Because Christ is calling me. Soon he was baptized and immediately he regained his sight. After witnessing the miracle, St. Sebastian's servants were also baptized. Reports of this reached Nero, the emperor of Rome, and he commanded that the Christians be brought to him at Rome. Then the Lord himself appeared to the confessors and said, Fear not, for I am with you. Nero and all who serve him shall be vanquished. The Lord said to St. Victor, So all of you who are called Victor, that's where your name comes from, from this day forward, your name will be Fortinos, meaning full of light, because through you many will be enlightened and will believe in me. The Lord then told the Christians to strengthen Fortinos. By the way, why is it that Jesus Christ spoke Greek so well? Most, most of his uh, disciples had Greek names, except, of course, Judah, the traitor, Judas Iscariot. But... Um, Even uh, the, after he was uh, resurrected and uh, at the Sea of Galilee, he was on the shore waiting with the uh, fish that he was cooking for his disciples. When his disciples saw him and spotted him when he called them, uh, it's, I think it's in the, the Gospel of John, uh, he asked them how many fish they caught, and they said 153. 153, and there were seven disciples, and that numerology in the Greek, in the Greek language only, means heirs of the kingdom, singlironomi. And we know that St. John, the theologian, loved numerology. He even has it for the uh, number of the Antichrist, 666. And again, that's numerology for the Greek word, the uh, Christ of a different cross, Christos Xenustavru. So anyway, that's just in passing. Let me go on with this. The Lord then told the Christians to strengthen and encourage St. Sebastian to preserve until the end. All these things and even future events were revealed to St. Fortini, the Samaritan woman. She left Carthage in the company of several Christians and joined the confessors in Rome. And in Rome, or the emperor ordered the saints to be brought before him and asked them whether they truly believe in Christ and all the confessors 
refused to denounce the Savior. Then Nero ordered uh, you know, them to go through martyrdom. I'm not going to go into this here. Uh, then three years passed, and Nero sent to the prison one of his servants, who he had, uh, who had been locked up. The messengers reported to him that Saint Sebastian, Fortinos, and Jose, who had been uh, blinded, had recovered their sight, and that people were visiting them to hear their preaching. And indeed, the whole prison had been transformed into a bright, fragrant place where God was glorified. So Nero then commanded the saints to be, you know, crucified again. Again, this is what we all know what Nero did. He even burned down Rome, blaming it on uh, the uh, Christians. Now, after hearing words, such words, Nero ordered that the martyr be thrown into the well again. Uh, and then she, there she surrendered her soul to God. This was about 66 AD. The Greek usage of, uh, in Greek usage, St. Putini is commemorated on February 26. In Constantinople, there were two churches dedicated to St. Fortini, the Sumerian woman, where many miracles occurred, especially the healing of eye diseases. And the head of St. Fortini, the Samaritan woman, is kept at Grigoriou Monastery on Mount Athos. I never knew that until now. And this was her name day this past Sunday. We honored her. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I just want to remind you that Jesus Christ is alive and there are miracles taking place every single day. The source of wonders, the source of life came to the well to give life. The source of wonders himself came to the well at the sixth hour, that's around 12 noon, which is pretty late for women to go get water because it's in the heat of the day. They usually go at the beginning of the day when they need their water for all their work at the house. So she used to go at midday so that uh, she wouldn't be bothered by other women, um, you know, um, bother bullying her. Now, that because, of course, she, she was a wanton woman. Now, the source of wonders himself came to the well at the sixth hour to give life to Eve's offspring. For the very same hour, Eve departed from paradise. I didn't know that. Tricked by the serpent. And we know the serpent, of course, was Nahash. Nahash Seraphim, a seraphim angel, who after his, uh, who God took away his light from and made him uh, a serpent crawling on the ground. You know, a snake, a serpent. So, um, the, so the Samarian woman came to draw water here at the well, Jacob's well, by the way. When the Lord came to the well, the Samaritan woman asked him his, in his compassion, give me water, uh, of faith and I will receive baptisms water of joy and redemption glory to you life-giving Lord the Lord guides the woman to ask for eternal water speaking as though to a human being and not to a God she tried to conceal herself and said I have no husband when the Samaritan woman told him that Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans the wise creator guided her with soft words rather to ask for eternal water. But Jacob's well, Jesus found, by Jacob's well, Jesus found the Samaritan woman. This is what the Lord said to the Samaritan woman. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me water to drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you to drink so that you would never be thirsty again. He who it is revealed himself as in such a verse. He who covers the earth with clouds asked her for water. Oh, marvel. He who surrounds the clouds with water asked her for water. And he who clothes the clouds with water came to the woman and, and asked her for water. He who is born by the cherubim, that is surrounded by cherubim, spoke with a harlot. And he who suspended the earth above the waters asked for her for water. He, the source of water springs and pools, looked for water. For he wished to give the water of life to drink to her who was aflame with improper desires. For he wished to draw to himself the woman ensnared by the fierce enemy. For he alone is compassionate and loves humankind. And the woman generously drank the Lord of the Lord whose memory is eternal. When the Samaritan woman came in faith to the well and saw you, the water of wisdom, she drank of you generously and inherited the kingdom. Her repute is eternal. He came to search for his own image and he praised, and his praise is eternal. 
Yeah, the woman, of course, after that, eagerly ran to tell the others. The Samaritan woman heard your word, and when she received your word, she left her water jar at the well and ran back, telling those in the city, Come and see the man who knows human hearts. Can he be the Christ we expect, and who has great mercy? Come and see him who knows what is hidden, and is God come in flesh to save humankind. And a similar understanding is given by Pamela Hayes in her book, in conclusion, and with the Samaritan woman is com commemorated Friday, the main hymns of the day, uh, a politician and uh, exalt her to the thirst for Christ and her martyrdom through reflecting on her longing and bravery. We can also exalt her longing and bravery with hymns. I'll leave links below for you for this. God bless you. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.